<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, I have special guests here. These are a couple of our Ram customers, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves, where they're from, and what they're all about. I'm Josh Wisdom. This is my wife, Kayla. We're from Salem, Missouri, and uh, we own and manage Spring Creek Farms. We sell grass-fed and finished beef, lamb. We also uh, sell pasture-raised pork and uh, chicken. Okay, and so when you said chicken, you're talking about pasture-raised chickens. That's right. We use we uh, we do pasture-raised, and we do it a little bit different than what the majority of people do. A lot of people follow Joel Salatin's uh, model of the chicken tractor, and I think that's a great system. But uh, we kind of ventured out and tried something a little different. So what we typically do is is uh, we use uh, electric poultry netting and then a hoop building. Okay. And uh, we'll when we move them out uh, on the pasture. We'll put them inside of that electric netting. So we may have a, oh, it depends on how many birds there are, but there may be a third of an acre or, or a little more um, land there. And within that, the chickens just roam and free range within that. And then we supplement them with non-GMO feed. And then we move the hoop building inside. So as they come in and shade, we're able to move that higher use area as well as any of the feeders and waters within that area. And so okay. they'll be outside there for about four weeks. So, so you're by moving that hoop area, you're able to move the manure around. Exactly. Too. So we try to keep that spread out as much as possible while still allowing them to basically move themselves and yep. uh, to get a lot of exercise and stuff. But. So if somebody was interested in getting in touch with you folks to look at what you're selling or to buy some of it, what would be the best way for them to get into contact with you? So we do have a website. It's springcreek.farm. We're also on social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can contact us via text message, phone call, any, any way. Um, we have an email address. It's all listed on the website, on our social media as well. Would you repeat your website one more time? It's springcreek.farm. Okay. And earlier you were talking about uh, puppies and dogs, and you're kind of in. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I've been breeding <laughs> and raising and training livestock guardian dogs. I typically do Anatolian Shepherd and Great Pyrenees. I've been um, trying to do what I like to refer to as an F1 cross, or a lot of people refer to that in the breeding world. Um, so it's first generation crosses, pure Anatolian, pure Great Pyrenees cross. Um, so I breed and raise livestock guardian dogs, okay. and there are applications on the website as well. All right, and I heard you mention earlier that uh, you're taking a lot of your products into St. Louis. Would you tell me where, where at in St. Louis are y'all at? Yeah. We're at the Tower Grove Farmer's Market. We're there every Saturday. <laughs> every Saturday? Yep. Every Saturday. Um, you from like 6, 6 to noon? or We're there from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12.30. Okay. And you're selling what? Beef, lamb, chicken, and pork. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All of our products there. And we try to raise everything uh, that we can on pasture and grass as much as we can. Uh, of course, the ruminant animals um, never receive any grain. Um, mm -hmm. No no hormones or antibiotics or any of our animals there. Um, healthy, happy. Uh, we, we use rotational grazing. Um, we like to holistically uh, manage our pastures. Um, no herbicides. Yep. Um, we look at uh, weeds, forbs, and brush as something that we can utilize as a forage. Um, it's something that increases and strengthens the biodiversity of our farm. And as we have just continued to move deeper and deeper into that, we've just seen more and more results, yep. positive results. Well, tell me a little bit about the ram you picked out this morning. Oh man, we're just tickled <laughs> to death for this guy. My wife always wants to pick a pretty one, which, which is hard to, to not do, but I always tell her that color has to be the last selection. And I may not be the uh, authority on, on picking the best one, but this one's got many things that stood out to me. He's, he's really got a uh, really nice, even and large set of testicles that stand out for a breeding animal. You always want to look at that. Um, I, he's got some really, really nice looking, looking hooves on him here. Mm -hmm. Kind of dark color, you know, yeah. a lot of times that's kind of a, a benefit. They can be kind of harder and, and wear better. We don't do any hoof trimming. We cull animals that, that don't keep their hooves trimmed. So that's something we're really excited about here. Um, this animal is really nice, thick. I mean, you can just see he's got a nice hair coat. It seems like these animals always shed off really slick as they get a little more age, age on them. Age on them, yep. But, but as, um, you know, this one looks beautiful for, as a for young the age lamb. it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, just you can tell he's going to be a really slick one. Oh, he's got a set yeah. of testicles, doesn't he? Yeah. He also has a nice, thick backside. 
Yeah. And we also like to look for a nice upside down U or V shape in the back as well. And that's going to provide okay. a good broad. Oh yeah, nice leg. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to look at that for, you know, we're selling for, for meat, obviously. So we're looking for kind of those maternal traits as well as, uh, you know, traits to have, uh, you know, to make good meat production. <laughs> and of course we came here for the parasite resistance. Right. You know, you've right. been, uh, obviously uh selecting for that for for a long you know period of time and so that's one of the main things that drew us here is so that we don't have to rely on right on those wormers and things like that well i think that's key you know if you're going to build a sustainable uh, grazing operation mm -hmm. you know if you got to get your lambs up every 30 days and worm right. them you yeah. want to get out of that yeah yeah we don't have yeah. time for that with everything we've got going on that's just not and we don't think it's sustainable you well know, i'll we, tell we you you are a young couple I'm going to tell you all something. As you get older, time goes by quicker. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to be feeling like you're worming all the time. Mm -hmm. And just don't get into that rat race. Yeah. So I think you all made a wise decision going with parasite resistance. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, we're tickled to have you all here. And uh, so you, you all, uh, how long have you all been farming now? Oh. I've been farming for eight years. Eight? Yep. And okay. he has been yeah. just about a year or two longer than me. Yeah, okay. really. Mm -hmm. Well, you were saying you you met me at a grazing school. Yeah, it was a grazing conference, conference. in Cuba, Missouri. The Forage and Beef Conference they have yearly. And I think it was around maybe 08. I'm, I'm not 2008. sure. 2008. Sometime around there. Yeah, that was a and long time ago. And that was a huge inspiration for me, you know, back, back then. Yeah. And I was just beginning back then, actually. Right. Yes, yeah, so really. I guess that was... Really no, I was farming out longer yeah, than... Yeah, so longer I was, than I was, year too. That was around the beginning of my yeah. time. And so that's one thing that was was so good. I wasn't, you know, I was kind of new, so I had kind of open-minded, mm -hmm. you know. And to hear a lot of those things that you were talking about and... Uh, well, and it just really appealed to me because I just really enjoy, you know, thinking about managing the land. And, and, and it's the, it's probably the first time I really heard the term holistic management. Yep. And, yep. and that's when you really started talking about that. And uh, Well, if you all had to give one piece of advice, and I want each one of you all to, what would that advice be to a newcomer starting? They wanted to do what you all are doing. I'll I can, start, I'll I start can, with you, okay. ma'am. Oh, start with me. <laughs> yeah. As, so if you're in... A marriage relationship or yep. in a couple relationship work together with everything yeah. um try not to butt heads because that is very common in the farming world you'll hear people joke about working cattle with their spouse or working sheep mm -hmm. or whatever just really try to work together and um it will definitely make your marriage stronger in the end it's awesome great and you sir i i think you know just getting off to a right start you know with with any agricultural thing there's so many different ways of doing things mm -hmm. i mean we've been doing this for centuries and some of the old ways have been forgotten and some of the new ways uh, may not be sustainable and i think a person just needs to to find their own path do some research talk to people like you i mean you're mm -hmm. a huge resource and there's many many others and no. uh, start you know, I, I think just start small and, and just uh, kind of ease into it, you know, yep. and, and try to get as much education as possible with things. It's easy to get excited about getting the animals yeah. and not getting prepared with maybe a facility to handle them in, getting the proper fencing, maybe a livestock guardian dog or something mm -hmm. like that. So right. just starting small, um, getting that knowledge of how to do things <laughs> and, and, and broaden your knowledge base because, like I said, there's so many different ways to do things. I think a lot of times that you'll hear, well, that can't be done. And I think that Greg will attest to that. And probably uh, a lot of people have to agree. Greg's done a lot of things that people say cannot be done. Right. And that's what really opened my eyes. And a lot of those things make farming uh, more profitable, yep. uh, more fun, yes. um, more sustainable, uh, better for the environment. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's just... Uh, so so just keep your knowledge base broadened and and just uh be open to new ideas all right yeah. well thank you both so much mm -hmm. and again for folks that want to get in touch with you all your website name is spring creek dot farm spring creek dot farm that's easy to remember yeah and it looks like we got another customer pulling up here so i'm going to end this and i want to thank both of you all and your full names again uh, Kayla Wisdom. And I'm Josh Wisdom. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both. Thank and you, uh, best of luck to you all in your farming future. Thank, thank you. you. Folks, if you want to get in touch with them, uh, go to the description on this video, and that will be their website. Thank you all. Thank, thank you.